just pine lumber. It was a dead tree that I cut down, so that's why the, the beetle, uh, pine coat beetle was in it. But it's uh, nine and three quarters inches tall. I put a piece of plywood on the bottom, you screw it on with drywall screws, and it's the exact shape of a, of a bee box, so the frame will just sit right in. Pretty simple to make. There's uh, no real science to this. Uh, a lot of people say this hole has got to be a certain size. Char Charlie showed me an article a while ago that said it needs to be two inches square. Well, I've never done a square one. I've always been round, and we've caught bees in them, several, so maybe it works. I don't know. Maybe square is better. This is an old honey box that had holes all in the bottom. Cast it, cut holes in it, so I just took my table saw and cut it off, added a little piece back on, put a piece of plywood on the, on the back, and put a top on it <clears throat> so that uh, it'll do the same thing. But it's not in good shape. But as you can see, the bees are not going to care. They just do not care. It makes no difference. Put a plywood top on it. I just left this on so I can pivot and show you all, but I'll screw that top down four drywall screws so it's attached pretty uh, securely. Throw a hole in it here for hanging from by myself. If he's helping me, we don't have to do that. He'll hold it up while I screw up the tree. But by my myself, I'll just screw up the tree in it. I'll screw in the tree, pick it up and just set it, set it on that. And then I can drive screws in the boards and I pre-drill those to make it easy so you can do it one-handed. Um, Charlie has done several. He puts his up. How high do you put them, Charlie? 12, 14 foot? He, he just come out with an article in B Journal there. Said that best place to put it is 16 feet off the ground. Oh, that's I'm not doing that. Come out with <laughs> I'm not doing that. My legs and stuff that break is not worth all the honeybees out there. So, And I put it that high. <coughs> I can reach it to just get a screw in that board right there. And um, I did um, five the first year I'd done it, and I caught four swarms. Last year we did what? 10, 12? And we caught six or seven swarms. So I don't think the height, not, maybe the height is better, but it's not detrimental to have it down six foot from the ground. Hey, if one thing you don't want to use <coughs> is drywall <coughs> screws. They will break. <laughs> I had a squat down coat dry on a tree and it hit the ground. <laughs> Nothing set in stone about it. I'm just saying. I mean, it's just whatever you want to do. Yeah, they, they're hard. They will break. Unbelievable. <clears throat> screw. Bottom has six screws, I think, in it. Y'all count them? I believe it's six. And I'm going to break all six of them. So that's just enough to hold it on. And when we catch a swarm, we'll take a piece of duct tape and put over the hole. And we leave it there for 10 days, two weeks, sometimes three weeks to see how much bee activity. You can ride by in the pickup truck where we set ours so you can see them. And if there's bees buzzing around you, you know you got them. When they're bringing in pollen and nectar, they're building a the hole. So they're going to be there. I give them a two or three weeks. I go by and put a piece of duct tape right there. Two more screws, three more screws, Charlie. Drywall screw. <laughs> in the top. And we just said, Charlie's standing on his drywall screw. Yeah. <laughs> He's standing on the right. Yeah. <laughs> if you do it during the daytime, what do you do about the bees that are out? We do it right at dark. Okay. Right at dark. I mean, it's just when we get the last one off the tree, it's, it's dark. If we got two or three to move at one time. Okay. And we do probably miss a few, but how many? Them? Most of them, most of them in dark. So, yep. <clears throat> what, we, what we do is, I would, if I took this one off a tree, I would try to have another one to put back on the tree, an empty one. And I just take this one back where we're going to put them and we set them up, I leave them in this box for a couple of days and before we transfer them into a, a bee box. And you usually have a queen in there with them? They will have a queen in there with them. We put uh, lemongrass oil as an attractor. I use uh, a Q-tip, and 
and I'll just put two or three drops on the end of a Q-tip, and I'll dab a little bit right in the hole right there, as uh, so you can smell it. And I check it once a week. The um, the first year I did it, I had five boxes. I caught four, and after about a month, what happened to five? And I went and opened the lid. It had a wasp nest that big. So now, when I open them every week, I look for wasp nests. Uh, when you put your lemongrass, are you just putting that on the on the hole in the entrance, or are you are you putting a Q-tip or something inside? If it's mounted on the tree, I'll put it on my Q-tip. I'll swab that right there, and I just push it right through the hole. Just drop it in there. Well, you said when you go and check it once a week, you reapply that lemongrass hole. I'll I'll probably reapply every two weeks. I've read a couple of articles, and I don't know. I mean, you don't want too much. You don't want too much. They say it, it can be too strong for them. And this lemongrass oil is pretty potent. It, it, it's pretty potent. Make the inside of the truck. This, this, is, this, is <laughs> this is a this is a regular frame, mm -hmm. and this is a ten frame box. I'll only put three. I'll only put three in my traps. If you notice close, you can see the screws right here. And that screw is the whole three of them in place right in the middle. When I, when I take it to the house, I'll put it in a box. Well, I'll put these three in the middle of the box and fill the other, both sides to make ten. This is not a good one to put in a trap. I like the ones that black. Just been used in a hive several times, several years. The older, the cruddy looking, the better they like it. Like it's the, the smell, apparently. Now, this one has been used. You can see a little bit of the wax on it. But those that are really black and been used seem to do better. We like uh, the geezer again, so. That, uh, and, and, of course, this box is used, too, so. And it shows. Now, the new one, the new one may not do as good. But the first year I did it, I had all new. So. But it's, um. Uh, if I was just going to fool around with it, uh, I've got plastic foundation, wax coated foundation. Is it worth fooling with? Like this? If these, yeah, ain't, ever, if these yeah. ain't never been on it, you know. It works. Sure, sure it works. It works. Sure, it sure it work. it it work. yeah. The attractant will bring them there. And I've read several articles that says, uh, Tim would know much more, that said the bee, will, the, the scout will fly in this hole and they will fly yeah. side to side like a laser. And up and down to figure out the size of the inside of that box, and he goes back and says, "Hey, Joe, uh, boy, I got a nice box over here." Jill, it's Jill. Jill, Jill, Jill. Right. Jill, Jill. <laughs> so, oh yeah, Janet. But they want, uh, they want something close to the size. J O J Zero, not J O E. What's the for what size? For how many leaves it needs to be? Okay, I think forty liters. I don't know liters very well, but this box, forty liters. It's 16 and a quarter by 20. This is a regular B box. It's a deep high box. A liter is 61 cubic inches. <coughs> and this is the preferred size, although I've seen some call it in a shoe box, a cardboard shoe box. I've seen them call it in a mail box. These uh, letter a ream of paper boxes that they just tape up and cut a hole in it, set out there. In a water meter box. And a water meter, a lot of them in water meter boxes. They sure do. I like the front door. I have a, no, it's, I'm going to say it's a, it's the same size because I just use the same bit. One and three quarters, looks like. They're talking about the other thing. Yeah, it's the same size. They don't have to be that big, though. Yeah. It small. I just have to have that size real big, so I just make that's the size I drill them on. It doesn't matter what size. Okay, this box the other in the front so I started putting them I started putting them in this front and only because the frames go this way. Yeah. So I'm gonna put that frame right in the center now. Can you see in that hole? I know you can. You see it kind of close up part of the hole. If it ain't just still work, you still got room to get in. It does matter. Remember your witching rod? It does matter which direction where the hole goes, right? Well, that was ley lines. 
She is alluding to the witches rod or Allison rod. The first year that I caught some, I read an article about bees use the uh, ley lines for orientation, travel, and all that. Charlie, Charlie. It's Charlie. Slap it. <laughs> the two boxes, the two forms that I caught at my house, I said, well, I wonder if that's the truth. So I went and got my witching rod, and we use these all the time to construct this finding water line. And um, I would just, you just, here's how you do it. You just walk this way, and I'm going to make it turn. And when I got to where my box was, it did that. So then I went back, and I've done it again, and I walked this way. And when I got to where the box was, it did that. And that was the tree right there that I had that trap on. And I said, oh, that must be a coincidence. So I went to the other trap, which is 300 yards away, and I did it again. And when I got to that tree, it was this way. And when I went this way, same thing, right at that tree. So now, I don't know if I believe it or not, but I'll let y'all decide y'all do it. Y'all know. Um, I've read. i read most of most of the articles. I've read said that uh, face them south, but I face them where it's the easiest to be seen for the bees. I don't put it in a heavy shade, so I just put it. If it's an opening, I'm on the edge of an opening. I'd have it so it's facing the opening. So if the bees are flying, they can see it, and I don't even know how far a bee can see. You know. Over me. Okay. Yeah. But I just think it's worse than most visible. And maybe it does make a difference. I don't know. I, don't know. I thought she was. <coughs> like, I, I try to put them south. But sometimes you can't. So. But, uh, I, I really think that you can do this just about any way. Uh, most of the articles I've read said have them 10, 12, 14 foot high, like he does. I absolutely will not do that. It's just too dangerous. So I, I will I will say this. Make your nuke box as wide as you can because it's just a transitory affair anyway. So if if you're gonna hurt yourself moving the darn thing, and now don't don't forget now, some of these swarms can get pretty large, but the average swarm is anywhere from twenty to thirty thousand bees. So you're at the most you got three pounds of bees. So you got three pounds of bees plus six pounds. A 10 or 15 pound box. Yeah. Well, realistically speaking, when the escape was tracking, they used these uh, cardboard uh, paper mache kind of outfits that weighed total weight more, no more than a pound or two. No, because everything you've got here is a transient, transient, uh, transient situation. You're moving up these out of these boxes into your other five and you stop them. So keep them as light as possible. Correct. And then if you're on a ladder, I mean, it's even better. When, when do you quit trying to accept them? You quit? We didn't get them behind. Yeah. I caught a swarm last year in end of July. Normally, you don't see them after about the 4th of July. Yeah. Is, is it possible that swarm? Oh, they can swarm all summer long. Yeah. I've got one October. You just don't have as much chance to get well, And you don't have as much chance to save them. You're going to feed them. You're going to have to feed them. You've got to feed them late in the year. And if you catch one in the next three weeks, you've got all summer and up into the fall for them to make honey and pollen and, and survive themselves. But if you catch one in 1st of August, you ain't got much time. I, I will say this about any swarm that you capture. Understand this, they're, they're building. So the less they have to travel and work, the better off you'll be. So if you can feed those bees, just like you get when you get your new canal, <coughs> even if the honey flows on, if you can supplement their diet and keep them happy with a, a bee pro patty or something in there, you'll help the bees out tremendously. You hear that, Stan? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking that we feed our bees, we're, we're making lazy bees. I mean, the bees should be out there feeding themselves right now. That's good but, there's, but my dad showed me this article. There is no such thing as a lazy bee. They are working <laughs> as hard as they can. And so, therefore, we must help our bees. Just we're not Democrats. I, I, I'm sorry, Dad. There are no lazy bees. I can just picture these conversations with oh, mom and uh, dad and daughter. <laughs> You come across with these things, and he comes across with your so thing, and going this way and that way. Then they call Mark Charles. Charles. She's saying it's correct. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you, though. I think the more you feed them, why not just stay in the hive and just 
This is just to get the book up, okay? Help them out. I started to be last March. I took two fingers in front of me. Fell. When the pollen and stuff started coming in, they quit eating. Then it, after it dropped off, they started back in there. Yeah, it's a convenient food source for them, and, and they're going to take advantage of it. I'll tell better, 600 pounds of sugar. How much? 600 pounds. Nah, come on, Joe. 600 pounds? Sure can. You've been talking to Charlie. So, <laughs> the two of you stop talking. So don't visit each other. Wait, 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 wait. I, I got to make sure I hear this right. How much sugar did you feed? About 600 pounds. He said 600 pounds. That's impressive. Twenty-five pound bags. That's impressive. I fed uh, two twenty-five pound bags last year. And how many hives do you have? I kept it so Mr. Jarvis, how many hives do you have? Oh, you have two. So each each hive got twenty-five pounds last year. A little bit less than fifty pounds, not much. Was there another question? Oh. Uh, the article I read said that is the one thing that you can do as a beekeeper. To keep your bees from starving to death is a fear. You know, it, 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 like right now, you know, they're going out there and fine, but we get a week of rain and a cold spell, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to have some bees out. Feeding, feeding <coughs> does help attract these uh, wax moths. So you got to keep that in mind. Huh. Well, I tell you all, and robbing. I don't mind feeding inside the bees. But I ain't feeding them and making welfare bees out of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You and she, you and I, I'm treating yeah. you together. I'm with the job. Stacy, you're a You said you bought two new. I'm feeding them now. Yeah. You trap with, you catch two new. I set five out the first year, folks. Mr. Charlie set out 20. I'm, I'm fixing to get to Charlie. Okay. <laughs> Charlie, how many, be, how many hives you have last year? Almost a cold. No, how many hives did you have? Now? No, yeah, how many beehives did you have last year? About 40? I had uh, 47. 47. How many swarms did you catch? I must have caught 35 swarms, but I didn't know how to handle them. You cannot move a box over three foot. <clears throat> if you move it over three foot, he'll turn around and go back home. Yeah. Some of them probably would, but you can't That's you it. can't collect them and not move them over three foot. I caught lead swarms <laughs> in a week and a half, lowered them down to eight foot. Seven of them left. <laughs> <laughs> what a yeah, some of them's gonna leave no matter what you do. When I when I bring a box to the house, the first thing I'll do is feed them to make sure they have plenty of feed. I'll put a feeder on it and I'll feed them for the first two or three days. I'll uh, restrict the entrance so it's hard for them to get out. They can get out, but I make it much smaller to try to keep them in there to get them used to that. And then I do put a feed on there. And then after about the third day, while well, I'll open it, open it up and let it go. You, you can't put a cleaner glue on it, so try to keep it. But I well, have had them leave the, 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 first, the fourth day. If you put a, if you put a clean, if you have put them in a full box, yeah. or even a new, can you put a cleaning scooter on the bottom? Knowing that that swarm came in with a queen, if it's an early swarm, it's probably the old queen, okay? But it could be a, a young queen. But you put a cleaning scooter on there, and you have frames, and you have food in there for them. You can check back in a week and a half and see if she's laying. If you've got a laying queen and they have brood and comb, yeah, you can take that scooter off. They They're not going to yeah. Well, I know him and I, when we caught them, uh, we would take a, a super frame, a full super frame, just shove it in there with them. And every one of them stay. <laughs> Somebody asked, where do you put these boxes? I tell you where I want to put mine, but I can't. 
I want to put them by Charlie's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wasn't listening. He didn't hear me. I'm, I'm going to set them by somebody. But, um, There's access all around him. Yeah. <laughs> Red River's right there. Just saying. Almost every healthy hive swarms every year. I so don't take care of them. Yeah, you right. yeah I mean, you, but if you're not doing anything, they are. I mean, you, can, you can buy them. Add more box to get more room, something like that. But if you do anything, it's, it's full, three box out, it's full. They're going to go somewhere else. That's just nature's way of keeping the species alive. So if you if you got boxes there for them to go in, you got a good chance of catching your own. And I suspect Charlie caught a lot of his own. How far from your hive do you put it? I have um, in my house. I got one of them within about um, sixty or seventy yards of the hives. I only have two hives, and then I have one that's probably um, three three hundred yards from me. I also have a place in Grant Parish, and I just take two or three swarm boxes up there, and I just put them in the woods. No hives around that I know of, but there's feral bees everywhere. Um, from what I read, I hear it's anywhere from two to three hives per square mile in the woods. So that means there's plenty of bees in the woods. <coughs> I worked for Royal Martin for several years and I've seen them bring in plenty of bee trees into the sawmill, you know, with the bees of yeah. buzzing on the on the log truck when they unload it. So they cut there's plenty of <coughs> bees just in the in the woods. <coughs> so, so if you know where a pearl pine is in the bee in the tree. You just put that close to it, um, <coughs> and try to catch it. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know if you put it close, but if you're in the in the vicinity, I'm sure it helps. Tim, can you help with that? Yeah. When a swarm leaves a hive, they don't go far. Probably within 200 feet, they're going to be hanging on a branch or tree or something somewhere nearby. They don't go very far. Their the whole agenda is to get away from the existing hive. And before they swarm, they've already sent up, usually it's been shown that they've sent up foragers, that they pretty much almost have an idea where they're going anyway. A lot of them already preconceived notions of where they're going and they're just resting and getting away from the hive. They, they engorge themselves with the uh, honey from the hive and their, and their guts. That's all they've got to carry with them. So if you put your, your uh, boxes near your hives, or if you're not managing your hives, you shouldn't have that problem. If you put them near a, a feral tree, or a feral uh, hive near a tree, and you put your lemongrass oil, and, uh, you probably pick up a swarm or so. I only if, I only, do it. The only way you're going to get them to do that, Tim, though, is for them to be wanting to swarm. Well, yeah, well, you, you can't put them beside them. No, not necessarily. No. Go to your box. Uh -huh. Yeah, but there's plenty of beehives in the woods, plenty of them. And if those of you live, live near the National Forest, places like that, that's a good place to put them. Just put it on, on a place where you can safely and legally put it, you know. And um, you stand a good chance of uh, catching a swing. You want to say? Yeah, want to have a video here. It's on the same topic. It's great. I just read it this week on, some of y'all probably saw it on the uh, Tim, I caught one of my own last year from here to that door from my hives. Mm -hmm. They just flew out of the hive and lit a tree within 30, 40 feet. And that's telling you what they're doing. They fill up on the bees, fill up on honey. The old queen, half the bees leave. They settle nearby. And like I said, mine was here to that door from the hive. And uh, they stay anywhere from 30 minutes to three days. And I apparently caught mine the morning they left. Yeah, you shake them off. We just cut the branch. He held the box for them. I just cut the branch. They just fell in the box. <clears throat> I've never used a bee back, but I know Tim has, has and a lot of other people may have, but I hadn't used that. I, I, I used it the first season they ever tried, and I stopped doing it because it's too hard on the bees. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, pretty violent. It kills a bunch of them. Yeah. We, we, this is the one we want right here. Yeah. 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 Not that. Not that. Not we might want it, but we ain't getting it. Yeah, you're right. I, I told some of y'all last year, I saw one that high in a pine tree. It was uh, 35 feet up. Oh, yeah. The guy went and got his 12 gauge shotgun, laid a 
huh. a tarp on the ground, blue tarp or something, I don't know what color it was, and laid a 30 by 30 tarp on the ground. Bow! And sailed right on the tarp. Oh, Little Greg took his box and Little Greg was just breaking them up. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. What they mean? This is uh, not many people have this kind of equipment. See how high they are and how high they are. This high. Tim, Tim, Tim does some of this. That's way up there. That's um, 20 feet. I did not do some of that. 20 feet. 20 feet. See, this is maybe a six foot ladder, I don't know, but nine or ten foot, that's possible. This one's great, he's on a four foot ladder, so box under it. I love this one right here. The average swarm height is L plus eight plus 12 feet. L is the ladder height, H is the length of the handle, so they're 12 foot above you when you get up there. <laughs> Oh, the, when they're saying honeybee democracy, there are some articles, and there actually has been a lot of research done this. Yeah, that, that's the United that States is not a true democracy, but in a hive, it's a republic. They do vote. So it's, <coughs> it's a conglomeration of these, of these bees in there. They make a, a decision what they're going to do, and they're usually, uh, they usually, they, they've uh, formulated that decision, and they go and do it. Are they Democrats? <laughs> yes, they're more Democrat than we're Democrats. They don't worry about transgender, though. A couple of years ago, we had um, some members who created these boxes you see on the left. I think those are pretty neat. I like this one in the middle. <clears throat> and a lot of them have a, uh, a rope that goes through the bottom and the lid's hanging on the bottom and they pull the rope and the lid flops up and closes. Cool. Oh, kind of neat. They're standing on a short ladder. One's holding it, one feet to cut the limb. <clears throat> They're very docile when they're like that. I mean, if you snap the limb, they would just fall right in the box. One thing you want to carry with you when you do these is uh, a spray bottle of, uh, if you don't have it, but a spray bottle of clean water. You can add uh, sugar or honey to the water, sugar water, and they really eat that, that sugar. Usually they're hungry. It looks like, like a swarm box, box on five of the three there. I know, that's, so that's a swarm box on five of the three. See the board is screwed on with right here? <laughs> and they found it, and now, they just showed up and they're gonna oh, be in there in an hour or so probably. Mm -hmm. Look how many different kinds there are now. Any shape, size. Like I told you, I don't think it makes a difference. Just anything close. There's the bee charm, bee lure, lemon grass oil. Old comb. Mm -hmm. And old comb, this is what I told them about when I said dark. Dark fringes, this kind, they've been used a lot. It's got that scent. Now here's the uh, 10 to 15 foot above ground. I'm gonna leave that to y'all, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <clears throat> Two dangles. The shape of interest, direction interest faces, and shape of box do not matter to the bee. I believe that. It says, Avoid new lumber and paint. Yeah. Well, oh, <laughs> they're going to have to take this one anyway, because uh, I'm going to paint it tomorrow. I didn't paint it just to show you how I make it. It's okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Around an old barn. The night pole always works well. <laughs> There's one sitting on a trash can upside down. Don't follow the rules. <laughs> yeah, them don't read the books. Yep. You asked about back a little bit. A swarm in May is worth a load of hay. A swarm in June is worth a silver spoon. A swarm in July is worth a flower. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> You're fighting against going personal to point two No, I just I just find it. It is it is fun kid. What do you do when you catch it? Yeah. What do you do when you catch it? Yeah. I've got a brother that has several. Yeah. Good to have more than one hive. So if you have a problem, you can rob from your good one and maybe help. I saved one of mine last year. I opened it one time and there was no brood whatsoever. And not one cell through. So I knew the queen was gone. And I just opened the other hive and it was full brood. And I took three of the brand I good and brood, put this one, took three out of that one. Shut it back up. Six weeks later, I'll arrive at night. You can't draw on one and come heavy.